So anyway, all right, we're we're in the leader, we're in the national call, Brandon. So let's do it. One oh two. Yep. From where I come from, we're right on time. That's right. <laughs> oh man. Um, I think we have uh, a video to transition, and then I wanted to to bring on Brad and and Kira Ganey. And I think we have Kevin Purdy as well, who's in an airport traveling with his family, going to Philadelphia. But um, let's get a solid transition here with a with a video, shall we? Everybody can kill our screens. Before symmetry, I was stocking boxes in the warehouse for 12 bucks an hour. Before symmetry, I was a, a depressed mess <laughs> and uh, unemployed. I was a pre-med student. I was killing myself working about 80 hours a week as a superintendent, uh, raising everybody else's kids but my own. I was a psychologist uh, for the state of Texas. Five years ago, I moved from uh, Spain here to America, didn't speak English, learned the whole new language. I came from a pretty successful career, but I got beat up when the collapse of the secondary money market happened. I had to start from nothing at 50 years old, and that's pretty hard to do. I came into the symmetry not knowing anything about sales, insurance. It scared the daylights out of me, to be honest, and especially going into it being a single parent, I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? What happens if I have a bad month? You know, what happens if this doesn't work out? It was about six weeks of me just making a mess, but I also knew that I was in the right place, and I knew that if I just kept at it, it was gonna be a great fit. The income is astounding. My first week in the field, I went out and wrote a couple of applications, wrote two apps, and I was able to make a thousand bucks in about a week and a half. I made $3,100 in one night. At the time, that's how much I was making a month. I sold six policies and they all got approved. They all got issued. I got, you know, paid around $4,000. And I remember calling you and being like, so now what? What's the catch? It was probably three or four months before I was back to making the level of income that I was used to in the car business but I knew it was coming. And I knew that once it came, it was gonna go way further. And my first year in the field, I worked two days a week approximately. The rest of the time I was able to work from home, spend time with my kids. And um, I was still able to net $119,000. In our first year, we were able to replace our income of six figures and work about half the time that it took us to work in our previous um, career. I made uh, 15 grand my first full month here and then I think it went up to almost $20,000 after that. And by the fourth, fifth month, I was making thirty dollars to $35,000 a month uh, very consistently. I went from making $1,500 a month as a stock in boxes to over $25,000 a month. By the time my first year was up, I had made over $250,000. <laughs> that to me just blew my mind. And I was like, no, I had to go back and recount. I was like, are you serious? I've never never ever been in a profession where the money has continuously flowed in like how it has since I've been with Symmetry. The, like, the mass that I made before, before Symmetry, it was uh, probably like 20,000 a year. So going from 20,000 to almost 200,000, we get spoiled here, right? In the midst of a global pandemic, the year prior, like each of those years, I was able to get a six figure raise to the year prior. Uh, last month, I had 88 deposits into my bank account. More money in a month than most people make in a year. It's not that I'm so great, it's that the symmetry system is great. All we have to do is control our own activity and, and the money will follow. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. There you go. That's a good, one. good job, videography. That is a good one. Getting those yeah, results out there. Love, That's love, so love. good. Getting blown up with text saying, that was an awesome video. Yep. <laughs> um, soon that will be shareable on, obviously, social media, websites, uh, HQ, everywhere. So hang tight. Also, owner circle sites, recruiting funnels, you name it. Had a couple of questions like, we're going to see this again. We're going we're gonna to share that. We'll get a uh, notification out on to you guys. Yep. Like we were talking on the builders call, that's why we need to start leaning into OC. If you don't have an owner circle site, you need to start getting in that. You need to get that recruiting funnel because there's about a series of four, four to five of the videos like you just saw that we've been working on for the past 90 days uh, with the marketing team that will really help you kind of 
you know, help you explain the value of what we do and what, what kind of position we can put people in very quickly. So it'll help you with recruiting and it'll help you with onboarding, or it'll just help you with your own mindset and understanding what it is we have here. So go yep. for it. Yep. Well said. I want to bring on before we kind of get into today's call, um, Brad and Kira Ganey. Also, Mr. Kevin Purdy, who I know, Kevin, you're traveling. So if you aren't able to talk, I know you're in an airport and that can be just very stressful for sure. There you are, KP. Um, it's been a rough week, man. We uh, we made an announcement on the last call, but um, wanted to make it again here and uh, just let everybody know that the coach, Mr. Terry Garvey, uh, has been a wonderful member of the team for nine years, over nine years, uh, I believe now. Kevin Purdy was your first agency owner, was your first kind of running buddy back in right. the day. Brad and Kier, it was your upline. Um, anyway, uh, Mr. Garvey passed away this weekend, and I think the funeral, Kevin, is is Friday. So just wanted to give Brad and Kira, Kevin, you guys an opportunity to kind of speak to everyone. I know that uh, Terry made such a positive impact on so many people, and we kind of laugh and snicker talking about Terry because he was such a wonderful personality to have in meetings, especially it's like everything that came out of his mouth went through a megaphone and he never, you know, once you're a coach, I think you're always a coach. And I could just, we always would tease, uh, tease Terry and tell him that we could just see him in those short shorts and, and striped white socks with a whistle around his neck, yelling at me in high school or in middle school, <laughs> making me run for something I said or did, but um, what an amazing guy, Brad and Kira. What an amazing man. Yeah. You know, um, thanks, Brandon, for uh, having us on here to uh, just say a couple of nice, kind words about Coach. We love him. Um, really nice. The community of Symmetry has been just incredible. I had an opportunity to talk with Mary yesterday, his wife, and she's just been floored by the outpouring of love, all the nice stuff about Terry. Um, it's really, really nice, yeah. really nice. Um, he, she said symmetry was the best, best thing that happened to Terry. And uh, quite frankly, he was, he was one of the best things that happened to my, my, my life, um, my agency, the people he's affected. You know, um, a long time ago, we talked about promotion and going to a conference and the importance of association, being around the right people. And uh, I said, Terry, you know, we got a conference coming up. In January here, you got to go to conference. He's like, I'm not going to conference. I'm not going to conference. We all, all have people like that. At one time, it said maybe something like that. And uh, I said, look, you're going to conference. He goes, look, it, let me tell you. And this is how, you know, Terry, he's like, look, it, I'm a coach. I'm not a cheerleader. I don't, I don't carry pom-poms. <laughs> and uh, long, long story short, we got him to conference. And uh I was, I was speaking to a group of people afterwards, just huddled up after conference and he grabbed me by the arm and said, come here. And he goes, I want to thank you for getting me here to conference. This has been the best thing for me. And, um, you know, as, as much as Terry didn't want to um, hold pom-poms, he's, uh, he's been a, a great cheerleader for myself, mm -hmm. our team, um, and all of Symmetry Nation out there. He's, he's definitely passionate and he, he wanted to serve us and help us just become the best that we could be. And, um, you know, he's, he's, he's woven Well, like yesterday on our call, I believe it's Scott Summer saying he's, he's woven into our, the fabric of not only our, all, all the agencies in the Purdy agency, but also in symmetry and, uh, he'll be missed, but not forgotten. So thanks for, thanks for giving us a moment. I got to jump on this plane. And, I hear you, buddy. Um, Give our love to the family. I know you're, you bet. You're going there, so appreciate you, buddy. You got it. Thank you. Yep. Well, Brad, right, yeah. now if there's anything that you that you guys wanted to add to that or or not, but well, yeah, um, Kira and I were were blessed and fortunate to to be able to work with Terry for the past eight years, and um, you know what an an incredible mentor Terry was, not only to us but to everyone, and um, you know he had a heart of gold. Um, he shot from the hip. Like you, you definitely didn't question where he stood on anything. That's, just, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, he would, uh, give a shirt off his back to anyone that needed it. And, um, you know, his, uh, his legacy will live on, um, in memory and then all throughout our agencies, uh, with all that he's taught us. And, um, you know, there's just a, 
looking at a lot of the posts um, on social media that we've been able to see through Terry, like so many people looked up to him and, and Brandon, what you were talking about with him, like, yeah, you can imagine him with the whistle, the short shorts. Okay. It's funny that the friends and the family that knew him way back in the, the day, they describe him just like we describe him. Like Terry never changed. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that was, that's really cool. You know, when somebody doesn't change who they are because where they are and um, he was always true to heart. And, um, you know, just a, a couple quick things that, that he always reminded us of, and it, it'll echo in my head forever. And he was like, don't you ever forget, you know, what a noble business we get to be a part of. You know, we, we get to change people's lives, whether it's the clients that we get to help or it's the new agent that we're interviewing. And, um, and he looked up to you guys like none other. Cool. Um, you know, another thing that he would always say is, look, the founders of Symmetry have never made a decision that didn't make it better for us. So just remember that he looked up to you guys like none other. And um, I mean, it's just an honor to be able to know him. Um, I was doing the math. Uh, Terry was a part of my life for 20% of my life. And um, he, he was the man. So we love him. Yep, we do. I know that the uh, family is, uh, they're having the funeral uh, in, I think it's in Philly, Brad, on Friday. And they've requested uh, instead of flowers that they would love to see donations going um, to Make a Wish, Make a Wish Foundation, which all of you guys are very familiar with, obviously, um, or a Veterans Foundation. Was there a specific one, Brad? Kira? Yeah. Fold, folds of Honor. Folds of Honor. Okay. And we're going to put that, um, we'll put that up on our social media as well so that everybody has a chance to see that and would absolutely love for you guys to. Um, you know, honor him and, and uh, his family and the impact that he brought to the whole organization by just making a small donation, whatever you can afford to one of those two organizations. Yep. Um, Terry was a smart guy. He knows that that's what will also make you feel better for doing it. So thank you, Brad. You know, he built a good business too. You know, that's another yeah. thing we, uh, yep. you know, we have to talk about sometimes is, you know, when tragedy like this happens, that is, you know, uh, the, the hard work and the, the heart and the dedication that Terry put into it is going to live on, you know, um, his agents and the people that he left behind are going to live on and they're going to kind of pick up the torch and carry it and run with it. And, you know, from a financial standpoint too, that is another reason we just got done talking about with the, all the builders, like, you know, the value proposition of like, having something that actually lasts, even if we're not in the picture, you know, because things do happen. People do get sick. We die. Like we're all going to be there. And to just have something like that, that can remain for the family um, is a pretty special thing. He built that, mm -hmm. you know, he did that and uh, man, he did it well, you know? Absolutely. He did it in, in, you know, a later stage uh, in his life, which I think is also yeah. just so motivational to so many people that thought their lives were going to look like a certain way. And then you reach a point and, you know, maybe the rug was pulled out from under you or, or maybe things just changed because you did something or just something happened. Who knows what, but things change. And the idea that, that, you know, he could come in and have this redemptive quality to go out and, and, start over with something that he had no idea how to do it other than you know when you're a coach this is a pretty good place to be I would imagine because there are a lot of people to coach um and you know he did it so gracefully and so successfully um and I think that we should remember that and, and, and always take that as the motivation that it should be because there are a lot of people out there that need what what Terry had there are a lot of people's families out there that need what Terry had and what he created and what he built and what he built that will last Casey for his family, as you were saying, yep. that's special, you know, and that's how you leave a legacy. And um, he did a wonderful job at that. Yep. So Brad and Kira, we appreciate you guys for sharing, sharing that with us. Thanks, you know. so. well, Thank you guys for having us. Yeah. He's uh, he's made an impact on a lot of people. And I think because of the work that he put in, he's going to continue making an impact on a lot of people, Casey. And yep. that's, uh, that's a really cool thing. I don't know what else yep. you could ask for. Yep. I agree. So, yep. All right. Let's hit some leaderboards. That was a good week, buddy. It was a great week. Y'all are, are absolutely rallying right now. We got to keep that up. I think, um, 
I think, you know, July was a good month. If we were comparing it to the first quarter of the year or any, at any point in the previous 12 years of our company's history, it would have been just an amazing month. And many managers broke records doing it. But I also think that there were some people that, that kind of felt some pent up energy and maybe needed to go to the beach, maybe needed to go on vacation. I think there were some clients that might've needed the same thing. And um, I know a lot of people have started school this week. A lot of other places are getting ready to start school, go back there uh, in the weeks to come. So I would say August is go time. It's time to, to create all time highs. Like Casey was saying, you know, what kind of conversations are you having with your teammates? What kind of goals are you setting for yourself? Because the getting is good and it's about to get better. So go out and get you some of it. Here's the information on Terry, foldsofhonor.org or the Make-A-Wish Foundation at wish.org. Again, we'll put this on our social media for anybody that's local. If Terry made an impact on you and you want to uh, attend that service, I'm sure his family would love to see you. Yeah. All right, Casey, new writers for the week. Our number one was Laura Madrid with 5826 and our number one new agent for the month was Brian Schock with over $16,000. Well done. Top producer for the week, the DJ himself, Keith Fonseca, who was on the call last week, I believe. $27,428. bucks. Hello. Sean Hogue, though, $67,000 for the month in production. Nice. I don't think Sean went on vacation. Doesn't seem like it. No. Top 10 producers and app count for the week. Winifred Brown with 18. Jeremy Whitaker and Dave Alvaro both with 17. Look at all those folks with 16 applications. Man, that's oh, working man. hard. Number one uh, for the month was Harrison Zipkin with 62 applications. Well done. I see you, Misty Hutton and Cara DiNardo as well. Top med sub producer for the week. We're just stepping over it. We're not marketing it. We're not doing much with it. We're just there for you as you run up against it. Ask the questions and you might find one. Like Henry Barth did, 2206 bucks for the month. Jennifer Ring staff, $5,000 in premium on Medicare SUP business. Well done. Same thing with disabilities, just ancillary. Harrison Zipkin, $2,112 for the week. Number one for the month on the DI, Alan Cavalish, $6,541. Number one IUL producer for the week, the marvelous one, Marlon Faulkner, 18 grand. Well done, sir. Glenn Sagawa, $46,280 in IUL premium. Man, that's crazy, Glenn. All right, Spivey call Glenn, figure out what he's doing. <laughs> Edward Pritchett wrote an annuity. Boom. He might have written it on himself. He might have. He's got a lot of cash to park. Places, I'm sure right now. I saw those bonuses, Pritchett. I know. I saw those bonuses going That's... out. I like it. Look at D Stubbs, man. A thousand bucks. I mean, excuse me, a million bucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot an extra comma, comma there, in there. Yeah, it's two commas, not one. Yeah. Well done, man. Uh, where are we? DFL number one for the week. Jerry Choke, man. And and listen, DFL is about to blow up. Yep. If you want leads, you better send in a request because we got leads yep. and they're looking good. Everett Allen with 17 grand for the month. Jerry Choate, as I said, number one for the week. Well done. Right. Total yeah, recruits. The NFL really could be as big as our entire business right now. I agree. Like, and, and based on some of the early lead trials we're getting in right now, they're roughly the same cost as what it's costing us to generate a lead, a normal lead that you guys are used to working, a mortgage protection lead, let's say. Yeah, but keep in mind that the the close ratios are the same on the leads, but the premium is twice as much, if not three times as much. Right, Brandon? Yeah, with the leads, we're seeing three times as much. Average is just shy of four thousand dollars, and some mass massive was in there as well. The uh, renewal comp is fantastic. We're working on building out the service side to it as well. The technology is is a much better, much more of an upgrade. Yep. It's amazing. Um, a lot of people are coming in. Uh, is that next week, I believe, for the DFL in, in person seminar? Uh, I think so. We'll get dates on that soon, but uh, it's going to be good. All right, total recruits in the base. Mike and Christine with Matt and Brad Smith. Andrew Jimenez, as you can see, all with five, and Hemi with four. Kevin Purdy, number one on the direct side with 31. 
Go out and help some licensed recruits this week, guys. They need you. Matt and Brad Smith found five of them. Matter of fact, look, they were five for five with licensed. Love it. Jacob Pogue with 11. Kevin Purdy and Delaney with nine. And then the direct organization, Matt and Brad, with seven. New writers, look at this. Derek Brock and Amy Fine with four. Hemi with three. Purdy with two. It's funny how these are always littered with the same names. Have you noticed these leaderboards all kind of run together? Yep. Everybody's like, well, that guy's on every leaderboard. That girl's on every leaderboard. They're on the start of the funnel, and that yep. kind of comes down and spits out the end result, which you yep. want, which is six new riders for Pogue, Purdy, Faulkner, and Colburn. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. Look at all the season new agents. Aaron Weaver, Anthony Pretty Man, Ashley Largess, Bobby Jaserta, Carol Smith, Heather Ann DeRocco, Jesus Arizmendi, probably Jesus. That's just my bad. Could be. Never know, though. Could be Jesus. Caitlin Greenwood, Christopher Fry, Maria Nava Bricciani, Bresciani, 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 Marlo Shagan, Michael Ferguson, Rakeem Buxton, Shannon Gallagher, and Stephanie Banks. Nailed what do you it. think was the most difficult name to pronounce through there? You think? Um, Bresciani, we struggled. You, you kind of we slowed down on that one a little bit, but I, I think I think the rest okay. of them were pretty good. Thank you. We like might have that. butchered half of them for all I know, though. I know. My phone will start blowing to, up here in a second. I draw attention to all of you guys on the season new agent world right now. Congratulations to this list, but just congratulations to, you know, the company and all the leadership because a few months ago we rolled out this, hey, you know, our data is showing us that if you can get this many apps in this short period of time, then you have a very good stickability in our company, which then turns into more team leaders and then turns into more key leaders. And then it turns into more agency owners. That's why I think sometimes we're, right now we're starting to see like nine and 10 and 11 and 12 new agency owners promoted on a month when it used to be a year and a half, two years ago, four was an average month. We're just seeing, we've tipped the very beginning of the domino pile, Brandon. Like we've just kind of, just with that little move. And if you think this season, new agent move where all we did was we said, Let's just put a level of leadership around it. Let's put a target on it for new people to say, if you hit this, we're going to call you a seasoned new agent. We're going to send you a Yeti. We're going to just love on you a little bit, but it's a target. Go for it. I like what it. happened? We went from averaging four a week before we had a, what is a seasoned new agent to now we average 15, mm. 20 a week, which again is the beginning of the funnel for us. Everything else feeds into agency owners and, and, and up. And so that's really exciting. But if you guys think this move is exciting, you need to be on the call on the 18th that we're, we're getting ready to show up on the screen because we have some other moves that we're getting ready to make that we think will have five times the impact, if not more, as this move. Yep. And there will be even more incentive around it for your new agents to come in to hit this, this, and this target and massively jump into some really oh, cat out of the bag. Yeah, that's, right. that's not from you all right oh there we go all right key leaders for the week aronsa laragon 30,802 hello it's a big week uh richard osterhout with a hundred and three thousand dollars in a month as a key leader that's amazing. I mean, and it's not just Richard. Look at John Griffin, yeah. Vincent Andriotti, all these folks. Guys, this Ronza, is what we just got done saying. Look at the level of key leader production we're seeing right now on a weekly and a, mo and a monthly basis for these key leaders. Yep. That we've never seen anything like that. And that's because we just tip the scale a little bit at that SNA level. And it has a dramatic impact on up the chain. That's so, right. It's crazy. It is crazy. And we're, we're just starting to see the, the fruits of it, Brandon. Fast forward 90 days from now. Yep. It's going to get even crazier. Ernie Johnson Johnson, 53,261. I doubt that's what EJ stands for, but it might. Yep. It's a heck of a week, EJ. Look at Keith, 46. Nice. Jerry Choked, $216,000. That's awesome. As an agency owner. I mean, look at Newbauer. He was in the AO Academy. Look at these AO numbers. 
keep in mind the numbers to hit for an AO are 35 grand of net place. Look at these numbers. You guys are smoking it. Sarah Bailey, Larry and Ann Griffin, number one with 143,000 for the week. It's a very similar uh, $553,118 for Larry and Ann Griffin. That is a heck of a month, guys. Congratulations. Eileen Balmer, she's yep. just hanging out atop the rad leaderboard. She's the raddest of all the rads for the past couple of months. Look at that. $781,000. Look at Chris Cook's numbers as well. 500 grand. Melissa Wiggle, 450. TCAP, 450. Griff Martin, 450. Crazy. Man, you guys are just killing it. George and Janet, 114 for the week. Scotty Summers, followed by George and Janet, $424,000 uh, also for the month. Man, that's good stuff. Jim Bob Spill Dinner, $227,782 for the week. Got edged out for the month, though. Seven twelve dollars to seven ninety one dollars by Kyle and Lisa Kimbrell. Nice. Heck of a month, Kimbrell team. Almost $800,000. That's awesome. Executive Vice Presidents, look at Carl Miller. 137, just edged out Miranda Martin. Also for the monthly, just edged out, 694 to 609. Looks like we need some more EVPs. Calling all EVPs. There are openings. <laughs> We're hiring for executive vice presidents. You got to put the work in like D. Stubbs and Miranda Martin and Carl Miller have. But there's room on the leaderboard. Is that what your ad would say? <laughs> hiring at an executive vice president level? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Upwards of $700,000 of production required <laughs> <laughs> to compete. <laughs> Associate Crazy. partners. Look at Lynn White. $635,000 for the week. Nice, brother. Nice. Ryan Miller, 1.6. Jacob Pogue, 1.6. Both over 1.6. And $3 million for Lynn Watkins. Way mm -hmm. to go, buddy. Senior partner, Edward Pritchett. Boom. Almost 1.1 million. Marshall Whalen, just shy of 1 million. Number one senior partner for the month, Edward Pritchett with 4.3. And then I'm seeing a lot of numbers from people down here that, that I've read and heard broke some serious records yep. for the month. So congratulations. I know Delaney was in there breaking records and uh, Pritchett, or excuse me, uh, Purdy in there as well. Matt and Brad, I've heard from many people, 4.356, Marshall Whalen to 4.389, Edward Pritchett. That's a tight race. We might need an update on where we are as we round the first seven months. Yeah. Top direct for the week, KP. Top direct for the month, KP. $1.1 million. Well done, sir. Top base shop. Edward Pritchett, just shy of 100,000. He's gunning for that 100. He wants to stay there at 100. For the month, though, $272,000. Well done, Jordan Shank. Also, Ian Graham, Zach, yep. Little, Jimmy Spill Dinner. Jeremy, All of you guys that are killing the base. Keep it going. that base shop weekly, dude. That, you know, 40, 50,000 a week in the base is fun money. You better believe Fun it. growth coming, dude. Yeah. 40, well, average probably 40% spread, Edward Pritchett on $272,000 of premium yep. just in the base. Now keep in mind, he also got about $130,000 bonus. That's some coin. We might need to stop talking to capital partners and start talking to like Pritchett and Wayland uh -huh. and see if we can borrow some money from them. Right. I bet they'd give us favorable terms. That's it. We're good for it. Uh, we got webinars tomorrow with Americo. We got um, final expense call tomorrow with Mr. Gary Keith. We've got our Monday sales training call with Phil Robertson, Bradley Sullivan. Tuesday, we got uh, the DFL with Mike Resma, which if you're not on there, you need to be on there. And everybody stop what you're doing. I'm going to leave this screen up here for one second. Pull your phone out or your calendar if you still have that uh, and write in or type in August 18th, 1 p.m., quarter three State of the Union, hosted by Mr. Casey Watkins. <laughs> and I will be there as well. So better be in. Don't miss it. Yep. Invite your friends. Guys, Tell your mama she can come call. if she wants to. Do you mind if people's mama comes? Get them on. Get right. everyone on this call. Everyone needs to be on this call. It's a big Bring one. Them. A bunch of good, good stuff to roll out. 
I think we might be talking a little bit about some ears and stuff like that too. So big, big updates. Uh Bring it on. Let's just say there's going to be a lot of money made after this call. Yes. So this is not one that you're going to want to miss. Trust us. In terms of like just hard dollars, this is this one for a huge percentage of the organization is going to be able to translate for the rest of the year, possibly into more hard dollars than any rollout that we've had. I think it could I really do, especially thought, if everyone picks it up and promotes it the right way too. I thought it was a pretty good promotion there. What do you think? Good, Brandon. You're usually better at promoting, but I, no, I think you know it. Okay. I'm going to talk about it now. Mm. Let's go water. Oh, shoot. We're done. <laughs> Let me stop my share there. Boop. I know that we have before uh, we get in with Mr. Grant Lieber and his crew, we've got one of our good friends from the insurance industry, Mr. Kelly Stein Metz. Kelly, welcome from Foresters. Uh, where are you calling in from, man? You up in Minnesota today? I am, man. Good to see everybody. Yeah. See you, man. Good to see you too. What you got on your mind today for us? Well, Brandon, Casey, uh, I am here to tell you a little bit about the expansion of the My Policy program. Mm. Yes, sir. I like it. I would be remiss, though, if I didn't start off by thanking Symmetry and everybody on this call for such an awesome partnership in in the business and letting you guys know right now, um, I was listening a little bit earlier about uh, some scuttle about competitors and um, <laughs> uh, I could tell you as far as Forrester's financials goes symmetry is millions of production ahead of uh, the nearest next IMO and if you throw in a sure on in there it's it's about double the next IMO so nice. when it comes to Forrester's financial you guys are uh Uno numero. That's what I'd like to hear. So yeah, buddy. We, we appreciate that partnership. And, and to add value to the partnership, the My Policy program, we are very happy to accommodate you guys. This is an unbelievable opportunity for new agents or any agent for that matter to get your first year of premium paid for. I mean, that's, that's unheard in the industry. There's nobody out there else that I know of that does that uh, for their agents. So uh, fabulous program. And once we kicked this off a few months back with you guys, we were getting some responses from agents saying, hey, I really like to do this, but because it's a 25 and 30 year term duration, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm too old or maybe the premium was too high and it just didn't work for that agent. And came to you guys and said, hey, what do you think about opening up all term durations? 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And uh, you guys are all for it. So we are happy to announce that starting uh, a few days ago, agents can apply for any term duration under the My Policy program with strong foundation or the your term non-med product, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, or 30 year. So um, that's what I'm here to tell you about. And also, you know, we talked uh, a few weeks ago when I was in Asheville with you guys about uh, once a symmetry agent becomes a member with Foresters, how important it is to try to engage and use the member benefits uh, as soon as possible. We just rebranded one of our member benefits. It was called Make an Impact, uh, and it's going to be called Foresters Care. And that is probably the easiest member benefit for a new agent to engage in. It's a, it's a one-time uh, grant of $200 and the agent slash member um, now can use that any way they, w- they want in the community to make an impact. Um, a lot of uh, folks will do something like, for example, buy, um, you know, groceries or, or items for a, a food shelf or a homeless shelter. Or um, I just saw one recently, an agent uh, that was a member as well, went out and bought some supplies for Ronald McDonald House. Uh, things like that. Uh, everything that you guys stand for, we stand for, make an impact. Uh, that's called the Forester's Care starting in a few weeks. It's going to be rebranded. 
but that's a $200 one-time grant that your, your new members under the My Policy Program can use. And then of course we have the regular grant program that in the community up to $2,000, three times a year, uh, a member can get a grant from foresters as long as they wanna use it for something, uh, a not-for-profit um, in their community to make a difference. So this is why we, you know, are so excited to team up with you guys to do this My Policy program. Very nice. Yeah, very nice, Kelly. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you guys opening it up so that more people can jump in. And um, if you guys haven't noticed, we uh, we love foresters. Casey and I go way back to 2006 or seven yep. with these guys, and um, maybe actually even a little bit before that. Now that I'm thinking 05, Casey, but just a fantastic company values wise that matches very closely to, to who we are as a company. Um, so if you're new on the call or if you're, even if you've been around with us for a while, if you're wondering where should I send the business, I would start right here with Mr. Kelly Steinmetz and send it to Foresters. And if you have not taken advantage of the, my policy program and gotten a free, a free policy for yourself for the year, do it yeah. today. Can't no think way. of a company too, Brandon and, and Kelly, that really just align with us on so many levels. Last time you guys were were in, we talked about you know how similar our organizations are and how our values are very similar too, and that's important to us. You know, you guys are uh, we're, we're kind of the leaders from day one on, on giving back. You know, and you still lead that charge uh, with with all of your competitors out there. Um, and it's something that always resonated with me and Brandon. We always used those, those kind of member benefits in the home and talk, talked about that stuff. I remember that that made a difference in, 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 client, in the client's eyes too. Certainly made a difference in my eyes. Um, and in addition to that, you guys do some world-class trips. I remember in the first like year, I think it was a year of starting this company, Brandon, you know, Symmetry had just probably barely qualified for a spot to their trip. And it was to Fiji. And, uh, you know, me and Brandon, uh, paper, rock, scissors, or flip a coin over it or something like that. And I, you know, I ended up getting to go to, uh, Fiji and it was at a time where we were just, you know, we we're both just in the trenches, you know, trying to personally produce, uh, get out of, get ourselves out of debt from, from where we had come from. And just like, uh, man, that Fiji trip was unbelievable. Um, and it was just kind of a little bit of a shock to at least my energy system. Sorry, Brandon, you, you didn't get that little recharge that I did. But... <laughs> Leads. Right. Hey guys. Yo. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, I've got 70 brand new agency owners that wanted to say hello. Well, let's hear it. Hey guys. <laughs> Long time no see, right, Brandon? I know. <laughs> Great call, everybody. We're enjoying it over here. Oh, nice. Actually, only me. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, thanks, buddy. Yep. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, guys. Yep. Look forward to seeing you soon, man. All right. All right. Let's see who we got up for today's call, Casey. Mr. Grant Lieber, regional agency yeah. director, We're running about $125,000 a month of premium. Um, shooting for that, that next raise. Where are you at, Grant? Open up here, buddy. Yes, sir. There he is. What you got in store for us today? Oh, a lot of good, bad, and ugly. I like it. <laughs> it's good, I man. Like it. I like that shirt too. Rocking the rocking the brand, man. Man, yeah, I it. love this olive green. You guys picked a good color. Yeah, but I can't figure smart. out how to get the wrinkles quite out. I've washed it like 15 times, still a little oh, wrinkly, really? but I like it. <laughs> you gotta get Casey iron. to iron it for you next time you see him. <laughs> He's really good at ironing. That was his no, I'm not I'm growing up. <laughs> Grant, first before we get started, you have a lot of metals behind you. And I, we just got a, there's a lot of people that are going to be wondering, and I can, I need to get to it before the, the Q&A blows up. Um, are those swimming medals, spelling bee medals, soccer medals? What, what do we got working back there? Well, I will say I was trying to find kind of the, the ones, ones that mean, mean a lot, but were also kind of funny that remind you of, you know, the things to still just be grateful for that, that you can enjoy. And part of them is, is one is a savage race that me and Josh Hershey did at the little seven mile obstacle course, kind of oh, cool. going through some mud. A few are from uh, Arizona state. I got, I was on the racquetball team. So we were able to, to win uh, in the nice. singles and the doubles division, oh, well. silver and doubles, not as good in doubles, uh, but uh, some, some medals from, from college racquetball and it's all about know, having a good partner. Yeah. yeah. You got to pick yeah, the right man. partner, Grant. Right. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, I tried to get all the old bowling trophies, but they don't quite fit in the background. <laughs> Man, they were mostly right? participation trophies, though. So let's not get you're like it. a you're like a leisure sport renaissance man. Yes. I yeah, don't know that I would say leisure sports because you're running now bowling is. I mean, we, Danny Young will be the first to tell you any any sports you can smoke while you play. I'm not sure if it's a sport or a game, but <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. But man, you, you you going 13 or seven miles through obstacle courses like tough mudder type stuff. That's uh, that's intense. What that's has all of that? Because you're a competitor, obviously, and I love seeing that. What has that taught you about this business? What have you been able to apply from it? Uh, I I think it's it's the personal development side of like be shooting for a goal and be motivated by the goal, but don't let a, uh, you know, failure or not winning discourage you from continuing to grow. And I think that's been so tough about like feeling so competitive in an athletic sense is like, you know, even yesterday I was playing, you know, pickleball and it's like, I can't, I feel like I'm not having fun if I'm not winning, you know, but I got to think back to like, the journey of like the exercise and being there and playing, like having more gratitude for the event. You know, so I think that's what it has been. It's been like having more gratitude for what I have and it it not always being about number one, like we're striving for number one, but I'm still grateful to to be number two or three and have had the experience. Nice, man. Well said, buddy. It's it's such a good tip, honestly, what you just said. And I hope, hope people kind of understand that well is like, I think what you're saying um, because I think all, all of us can relate to this is like the value of having a goal and actually like pulling the trigger on signing up for that seven mile, uh, adventure race that you did. Right. You can't just get up off the couch and go do that. You actually, when you register for something like that, it actually says, well, this is what I'm going to do. And so your brain just automatically starts saying, well, we need to prepare for this. And I think a lot of people miss the, you know, because maybe they just think goal setting or, or vision boarding or kind of having a, a, a story of what you want your life to be like a year or two from now seems hokey or seems like it's just not really a key to success. It's way more of a key to success than most people think, because if you will get your brain to think about it and work on it, it'll do some magic for you. I mean, uh, it, it just, I always think about the placebo effect, you know, of, of drugs and how like that's a, that's a thing that that scientists have figured out that in order to test the the effectiveness of a drug, we have to throw it into a placebo trial. And so we're going to take 100 people and we're going to put them on a on the drug that we're trialing. And we're going to take 100 people and we're going to tell them we're going to give them the drug that actually is supposed to do what the first one does. But we're not going to tell them that it's a sugar pill. And a lot of times the placebo effect will create the same efficacy as the drug that they're trialing. And I always just think that that is like, that's one little scientific way to understand how powerful our brains are. And we sometimes just write it off as hokey. There's real science behind this stuff. And you just kind of dabbled in that with what you're talking about for a second. But I think, you know, people don't apply it enough to what we do and like goal setting and vision boarding. But anyways, I digress. Just wanted to throw that out there because that's a very big point, dude. That is a great point. You kind of touched on it. Um, The title today is I'm not there yet. So what can, what, what do you have in store for our listeners? Because you've got some, some really good ones on with you. Um, Nick and Patty Capitore are on with you. Just monster, massive uh, producers. One of the the coolest power couples that we've got. Love to hang around the top of the leaderboard. Um, Alec Myers, you know, running $50,000. You got Sean, excuse me, Shauna Berrigan, $25,000. Um, producer and growing so I will let you kind of introduce them Grant but maybe before you do that like what uh, what do you have in store for us today buddy yeah well uh, Brandon I think I think the main thing that, that we were all thinking about is you know there's a lot of milestones in this business that we sometimes can mistake like for finish lines and you know I, I know there's been lots of points where I've, I've had some some humbling experiences that have made me realize I, I, I got a lot of work you know left to do and, you know, I'm definitely in a, in a big season of that now as, as we're making our run to our next promotion. And, you know, I just think about, you know, a lot of the people that I've brought on here with me that are that have all been kind of going through a lot of incredible changes and growth in their business. And, you know, a lot of that change isn't isn't without having to, you know, take a big slice of humble pie and realize, you know, I, I got to get back on it. And so uh, I just wanted to, to share a little bit of my story. I wanted to share, you know, their stories to to just maybe inspire people that, uh, that, that, that maybe have gotten to a certain point 
and just let them know that they've done an awesome job, but we got a little bit of work left. And then for people that are just starting out that, you know, when you get to a certain level, celebrate it, enjoy it, but you know, let's, let's keep getting on it. Mm -hmm. I love the message. I'm not there yet. It's uh, Casey Meredith and I were talking about uh, this last night about how, you know, I I think it would be very good for most leaders within our organization, probably within every organization to always kind of have that mentality of I'm getting there, I'm getting better. I think as importantly, you know, going into most situations, realizing I probably don't know as much as I think I do. I'm probably not as right as I think I am. And I probably need to be more open to learning, you know, what I don't know that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you kind of have that, I think that's, if you boil it down to one word, that's called vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And Casey has said it best for 17, no, 19 or 20 years that I've known him. Most expensive thing in this business that you own is your ego. And the people that don't know how to function correctly within that ego, because an ego is also one of the most important things you have too. You know, we're not saying that it's, it's a bad thing. We're saying that an out of touch or out of balance ego can be a really bad thing. But I think what you're really touching on here, Grant, is this idea that, that most successful leaders have, which is just that I'm not there yet. I'm getting there, you know, and in doing that, we understand that, that if we want grace, we must give grace right? Because if I'm not quite there, if I'm getting there and I'm learning every step of the way, then I don't want to be judged as harshly as, you know, the same as I don't want to judge harshly because I have to have the understanding part of a healthy culture is is that I'm understanding that others are also just getting there. And so I think it's perfect timing for a call because change is disruptive. A lot of things that we've been going through over the past year and a half have been just that they've been disruptive. Um, And, you know, the, the willingness to kind of lean into that discomfort is what really separates, I think, long-term winners from people that will struggle. And part of that is how do you manage the ego and how do you, how do you lean into the idea that I just got to keep getting better? Doesn't give you an excuse on why you should be a jerk today, (laughs) but right. Just got to have that understanding. Yeah. Grant, thank you so much for being here with us, man. We appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. Well, I, I thank you. Well, thank you guys. I, I think, thank you guys, of course. And, and, and of course, Mr. Pope for the opportunity to speak. I have to extend that. Thanks so much to, to Mr. Todd Spivey. I mean, he has been the guy, the go-to guy for so many things and he has been so responsive and, and, and willing to just help out and in, in more ways than he needs to. And I, I definitely extend that to the home office staff. I think they're the, they're the unsung heroes of this business. And sometimes when we fire off a quick email to contracting or whatever the case may be, we can't always express that gratitude, but we definitely have a lot of love for the home office staff and thank you for putting up with me and all the emails I sent about different things. Um, but my name is Grant Lieber. I'm, I'm directed Josh and Daniel Hershey, part of the, the Miller Miller Puckett Whalen organization, and, and really excited to, to share a, a little bit of a story that I hope serves as, um, I, I don't know if I would call it maybe a, a, a warning, but just like uh, some pitfalls that you can easily avoid if, if you navigate it carefully. You know, I want to share some learning opportunities. I, I'm very fortunate to be joined by a number of, of business partners that, that I'm really grateful to, to, to have with me. Um, and we just wanted to talk about, you know, some things in our business that we've learned from over the course of the last few years that, that are allowing us to really level up. And uh, it, it has to start, you know, with, with kind of going back to the beginning. And so, you know, when I think back time to kind of the beginning of, of my business, I had started in um, July of 2016 um, was part time as I was finishing up school at Arizona State. Um, you know, never set the world on fire, but you know, part time producer was doing you know eight ten thousand a month of, of APV. Um, and then in, in 2017 is when I, I really started full time in the field. You know, running my 15 16 appointments a week. Um, I was never you know the top producer, but I never had a month below fifteen thousand of APV um, through all of 20 you know 2017 and. I actually, um, you know, started out by not missing a single promotion um, up to the was 80, now 90% contract level. And, you know, I, I look back and think about starting off 
there was so much momentum and there was so much energy in, in what I was shooting for. There was so much excitement around, you know, where we're headed. I had so much mentorship in Josh and Danielle and Carl Miller. And um, they always kept putting in front of me, you know, the next goal and put, keep, you know, stay in two promotions ahead and continuing to work through. And, you know, what are you reading? What are you doing um, to, to grow yourself on a daily basis? And I think that the period from, you know, late 2016, when I met Cemetery to, you know, through 2017 have been the largest growth that I've, I've ever experienced. And in, in 2018 was when we really dove into some of the, the cold market side of the business. Um, it was in that time when I found uh, Alec Myers and, and then uh, Nick and Patty Compatori um, and a number of other great people that, that are on the team. And when we got to the point where we're making our agency owner run, um, it, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, Brandon, like we actually missed agency owner on the third month twice. Qualified two months, missed month three, qualified two months, missed month three. And it wasn't until that third time um, in 2018 in, uh, in July that we actually finally ended up uh, making it past that mark. And um, the thing about getting, getting to agency owner, like, is that we didn't just kind of walk through the finish line. We didn't just step over that 50,000 submit. We actually did $98,000 of submit back then. And what ended up happening was that incredible blessing of hitting agency owner became a point of stagnation for me and my business. Because when I hit that agency owner at the, you know, near the end of 2018, I thought that I'd made it. You know, I, I, I thought that I'd, I'd gone past the finish line. I thought that, you know, uh, I was going to have, I had more medals to hang up behind me. Like I, I just kind of thought I was there and I ended up taking four months off from the field. Um, you know, I was sitting back, had, you know, five, six, 7,000 passive income and thinking, you know, I, I, I'll let the team kind of just handle it from here. And just a couple of months into that, you kind of realize, Hey, when your personal production's gone at, at that level of an agency, well, now the income isn't where it needs to be. Now my influence over my team isn't where it needs to be. Now my ability to, to lead others when I'm not doing it and I don't have that smoke of battle, um, you know, that, that really undermines your, your ability to, to create relationships with people and encourage them to go. Um, because instead of making deposits in other people's business by showing that I was the example and dialing with them and being there on the leaderboards, I was asking for, you know, a withdrawal from them. And so after I got back in the field, you know, for, for 2019 and, and got back into that production, we started to see a big up, you know, a trend, you know, that's where we were knocking on the door of, of 150. We, we've done as high as 170,000 a month, but then in 2020, I did the same thing again. I, uh, I got out of the field and, and again, I felt like I hit a point where I'd made it. You know, we just just hit the 110 contract level and and I was thinking, you know, the team's going to carry me through to the next one. And while the team is carrying us through, I lost being the example. I actually called Brian Delaney a number of months ago because I was trying to ask for some help and feeling a little bit stuck. And he's like, you know, he broke, broke down my business in like 45 seconds. It was incredible. He just asked me three or four questions. He goes, OK, I know exactly where you are. <laughs> he goes, you stopped being the example, you stop being the captain of the team, you're, you're trying to be the coach from the side. And you can be there, but not at the size of your agency. He said, until you're doing, you know, you don't have to set the world on fire, but you got to do 10,000 a month of, of personal production. You got to get 20 agent packs, packs back a month. When you do those things, you become the, the, the leader for your base shop. You become the influencer for your team. And you put yourself in a position where you can truly lead effectively. And so um, it, it took a steroid shot, guys. It, it, it took the steroid shot of, of having an altitude conference, the Whalen Altitude Conference at the end of this month um, to really get me reinvigorated about this business and about what I needed to do. You see, I never lost the passion for where I was going, but I think I lost a little bit of, of the energy. I lost a little bit of that fire. And so I got it back. I'm backing myself into a corner with the intended goals that we have for that particular conference. I'm, you know, last month went out, wrote $12,000 in business. I got exactly 20 agent packets back. Um, so we're right hitting those numbers with, with my personal and the base. And everything that we're doing with people on the team is just encouraging them to stay on it just a little bit longer. You guys got on a call, you know, recently and said, guys, your, your tongue might be hanging out a little bit, but just stay on it a little bit longer. Um, and, and I'm making that commitment. 
Um, Carl Miller just talked to me last night. He goes, man, you know, you get into the top of this company is going to be a, a factor of what your endurance is. And uh, I'm willing to, to make that commitment. And, and so um, part of what we're doing to, to, to grow is consistent, you know, personal production, right? There was a long period of time where I got away from doing the daily readings. I got away from doing the daily journals. And it's so funny. I, I, I'm so fortunate to live really close to Ryan Miller and I go by his house and he can kind of tell like, hey, I can tell you probably didn't read this morning. <laughs> it's just by kind of the way you carry yourself, the way that you're talking. And, and whenever I've had a little bit of a rut, I've realized it's getting back to what are the four cornerstones? Am I, am I rate daily reading? Am I, am I working to develop myself? Am I journaling what I'm reading to try and actually implement it, not just be in one ear and out the other? Um, am I, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm consistently being a positive voice for others? Am I associating with the right people? Am I making sure that if I'm having a day where I need a little bit of an energy boost, I call up Marshall Whale. That guy's never had a bad day, or if he did, you'd never know about it, right? Um, and so all these things that, that we're really doing to turn the tide now is, is kind of my message to everyone on the team is, if you feel at the point where maybe you're not growing, if you feel that you're, you're at the point where maybe you're just starting out brand new and you're looking at the path ahead, what I would tell you is like, if you just stay to the absolute basics, you don't have to go way off in left field. You don't have to do 15 different things and pull yourself in 50 different directions. All you have to do is just do the exact basics that got you uh, a two agency owner, for example, right? Just the basics of going out and writing business, go, uh, you know, sharing the, the opportunity with others and consistently working to be the leader for your team. Those basic things are going to be what carries you far beyond agency owner to regional agency director and, and beyond. So um, that's, that's kind of the message that, that I really wanted to share. And, and I hope maybe some of the, the, the stops that I've had in the business serve as, as a really good, you know, maybe warning for those that are maybe feeling they're approaching that. Maybe they're in that zone. And, and hopefully you guys can understand if you push through just a little bit longer, you know, you're going to turn the tide and, and have a really, really cool thing to look back on. Um, but with that, I, I, I want to make sure that I, uh, I give the opportunity to share to, to the guests that we do have on today. Um, I'm super fortunate to have, have four guests that, that I work with um, as part of my team here. And, and the first one I wanted to bring on, um, she's been with the company for just over a year. Um, her best month in personal production is $43,000. $43,000, um, which she done, you know, well under a year of being in, in the business. Um, she actually just won the, the Wayland Lake House contest that we came back from to be able to spend a lot of time with Marshall Wayland and get some of his, his coaching that I know she's going to talk about. Um, she has been a, a really, really cool, you know, voice on this team. Um, and, and as she's, she's grown the team now starting to work on building, um, just in her second month on, on the team leader qualifications. And so, uh, Ms. Shauna Berrigan, I, I want to bring you on, go ahead and unveil yourself. And, uh, I wanted to just, you know, ask you, like, you've had to, to navigate through some balancing acts in your business, you know, as you've kind of gone from being a really high quality producer to starting to build your team. And so I just wanted to, to have you touch on, you know, what, what balance has kind of meant for you and how, how you've navigated through it. Hey everyone. Thanks Grant for that. Um, and thanks for having me on here to give me a chance to kind of talk and, and go over it. Um, yeah. So my name is Shauna Berrigan. I am direct to Alec Myers and the Myers labor, Hershey, Miller, Miller, Puckett, Wayland organization. Um, and, and yeah, Grant, balance for me, you saw, you know, the struggles that I've been going through with, um, you know, um, I've learned a lot about balance. Let's just say that. Um, uh, I started over a year ago, just over a year ago. And, um, you know, I was, I had a full-time job. I was in education. I was doing some tech work and and education and and you know I was doing um I came on the symmetry part-time so here I have this you know this full-time job and I'm commuting to work I'm I'm working full time then I'm commuting home and then I'm doing you know symmetry in the evenings and and on the weekends of course and so you know I have I have all these things going now right I've got my family I am just in a new relationship um, I've got my son, he's in high school, and of course, all the things going on with that. And I've got symmetry, right? And so I'm sure I, I've got this down, right? I got this. I'm doing it. I'm busting out. I'm, you know, I got um, at one point 17,000 a week, and I'm I'm on I'm on top, right? I feel like I've got this down and I'm I'm on my game and I'm doing it, right? Until one day 
I go in my son's room and I really, he's not there. And I'm like, I go outside and I look and his truck's gone. And I'm like, okay, I look on the map and he's at work. Like, oh, okay. I was probably in the office and working and he probably waved on the way by and he went to work. And then, um, you know, I have my little guy here and he's, he's making the comments that I'm always in the office. And that's what he sees. I'm always in the office. Well, Sean is always in our office. And then I realize, um, you know, my I'm in this new relationship and he and I are having conversations that are starting with, you know, hey, I didn't get a chance to tell you the other day or, hey, I forgot to tell you or we're telling stories. And it's like, oh, when did that happen? Oh, that was a couple of days ago. I didn't have it down. I am sitting here trying to juggle all of this stuff and I am completely out of balance. There is no way I'm, I'm not handling this. I thought that I was, I thought I had everything under control and I was, I'm, I'm juggling 10 things. I got all this going on and I'm handling it. I got it right. No, I realized at that point, I am literally shutting my laptop and I'm going to bed. I'm waking up in the morning and I'm opening my laptop. I'm checking emails. I'm checking my account. I'm checking policies and it goes on all day. I was not balancing at all. It's crazy. And I didn't even realize and then I, I, I get to the point where I know something's got to change, right? And so um, it was right about that time I get, I, um, we're in San Diego, you guys were all there and I'm getting to meet everybody for the first time. And, you know, everyone, uh, I mean, you guys know I was doing well and everyone's talking to me and it really hit home. You guys were like, what's going on? Like, you're doing this part-time and you guys are here and you're meeting Brian at the same time as me. And he's telling you like, man, this is all she does. This is all I see her do. I don't even get time with her anymore. And that's where it really hit me. Like something's got, something's got to change. I'm not handling this well. I'm so off balance. And, and I knew it was starting to affect everything in my life. And, and, and Sean, like at, at that particular moment, right, because you talked about like getting everything done and you had this other full, this full time job where you were having to commute for many hours in the morning, you're kind of getting back trying to figure out how you balance it all in. And so like, what was what was the solution? Like, what did you do at that point to make sure that you could have everything? Because we all know that like the name of the game here is work life balance. It's not work, 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 you know, stand while standing on a balance beam. Like, so so tell me, like, what what did you do to adjust your schedule and, and make it so that you got everything that you needed, including the family time? Well, once I started breaking it down, um, I think it's when I really sat down with you and Alec and, and we went over everything. We looked at the schedule. We looked at what I was doing. I did, I had so much going on and I wasn't, I was trying to accomplish too many things, but I'm giving part percent to all these things that I had on my plate, right? It was time for me to make a choice. It was time for me to take that plunge. And I know I wanted to be here. I was making kind of like the, the one um, girl had said in the video, I'm making in a couple of policies, what I'm making in an entire month and I'm commuting to work. I was spending like 15 hours a week, just driving back and forth to my job. What am I doing? I had an opportunity here. So I did, I took the plunge. I took the plunge and I went in full time. But what did that do? It knocked me off balance again because now I'm making a change, right? Every time you take that step, you're making that change again. And I was off balance. And of course, I go into panic mode, I'm calling you, I'm calling Alec, I'm freaking out because now I'm taking on more and I'm trying to do this. And I thought this was the right way to go. And now I'm all off balance again, right? And you guys told me this is okay. It's okay to feel off balance. It's normal when you're taking a step, when you're moving up, when you're leveling up, it is okay to feel off balance and you do. What's important is how do we fix it, right? And the first thing you said was, let's look at your schedule. And I'm like, yep, let's look at that schedule, right? Let's go back to the basics and let's see what's on the schedule. So Alec and I sat down and we literally went through my calendar. Once I put everything onto my calendar, because you know, I'm thinking, I, I know, I know when I have an appointment, I know when, you know, I have stuff going on with the family. I know what I wasn't doing was accomplishing it. I had all these things. I had a to-do list, but I wasn't giving myself time. I wasn't putting it on the calendar to give myself that focused time, you know? So um, once I did, once I put it on the calendar, I'm good, right? Now I'm back in my role. Um, you know, I'm starting to uh, disposition the stuff on the calendar. So I'm actually able to see every day, right? If I get it done, 
green. If I meet with this client and um, and uh, family and we write the policy green, you know, I'm I'm marking these off and I'm able to see every day, right? So here I am again. I'm like, yes, I'm good. Got it. Now I'm on my roll, feeling good, you know, doing this. And now I have some friends that um, wanted to come on board. So I call Alec and I'm like, you know, let's do this. Um, I have a friend here. Let's do this. She wants to come on with us. So we talk about building. Okay, so my friend comes on board, right? That was where I started building. Now, I have my friend doing it. Now I'm starting to do first interviews, right? I, I'm trying to keep my production up. I'm, I'm going for the leaderboards every week because that's where I want to be. I want to beat Nick and Patty. I want to be up there with Sean Hogue. And I'm, you know, more appointments, more leads, you know, more this, more... And pretty soon I'm back to where I was before. My family isn't seeing me. I've got so much going on. And it's like, I, I just, as soon as I took that next step, I got all wobbly and I'm off balance again. So this time um, you guys had um, encouraged me to start reaching out. You know, I need to start getting um, with more people. I, I needed to see and talk to more people and I needed to see what everybody was doing. And so I'm reaching out to Josh and Danielle. I'm reaching out to Carl. And same thing, right? I'm back to you, where's your schedule? And as soon as we look at the schedule, it's like, okay, I needed to get it in order. What I needed to do though, was start being intentional with my time. So once I learned that, once I got the structure back again, and um, you know, Miranda Martin says it best, make Google your boss. Once I did that, once I was able to just go down and say, okay, this is focus time. If it's dial time, it's focused dial time. I'm not answering emails, I'm not taking calls, I'm dialing. If it's an appointment, I would have that same respect, right? I would be in the moment with that family. I would be with them. So I just had to do that with everything. If it says, you know, I'm doing something with the family, if we have a dinner plan, if we have a birthday, if we have, you know, just time at the park, or we're gonna go do something, that goes on there and it's focused time, I'm doing that. If I'm working with agents, I'm focused on them. I'm working with the agents. It mattered to make that intentional. So once they started giving it some intentional time, intentional focus time, again, I felt like I was controlling it. I was controlling my time. I'm controlling my schedule. I'm controlling my life. So I didn't feel that, that balance, that off balance anymore. So then I feel good again, right? Now I'm going, right? Now I'm, I've got all these things and I realized I am doing so much, right? I feel good. I'm getting all this done. I'm looking at my calendar and I got all greens going every day and I'm feeling good. What am I getting accomplished? Not a whole lot. I did all the things on there, but I was not truly doing it. I'm doing so much, but I was not being productive in it. So, I mean, it's like now I'm at the point where I notice these things. I notice when I'm getting off balance. I notice I'm ready to take that next step and I'm nervous. I'm at a point now where, I mean, I have my family. I'm really good about family time and being intentional. Um, you know, we have bowling league one night. We do golf every Sunday. I mean, I have my time and I make sure that that's focused time. It's intentional time, but I've got agents now that I'm helping. Um, I'm doing interviews. I'm trying to keep my production up. You know, I'm leading huddle up calls. I'm doing calls and things like that. And I have a lot going on. And every time I take that next step, I start to feel unbalanced again, but I know what to do now. Now I know what to do. Now it comes down to that structure. I got to give my life the structure. I've got to get back to the calendar and give my life the structure. Don't let things happen. I, I notice it too. Cause I'll notice like all of a sudden I'm, I'm losing a couple policies or, you know, my bank account's looking a little low. I know it's time to reevaluate. It's time to go back to the basics. What is my schedule? I need to start moving some things around. Um, um, just like you had said, Grant, you know, I just got the chance to meet Marsha Wayland in person and what an amazing experience that was. And, and to be able to talk to somebody, you know, that knows so much and is so knowledgeable. I mean, he gave me such an insight, but again, it came down to my schedule. It was one of the main things that we talked about and just going over it with him. And here I go in there and I'm like, I got this. I'm ready. I've already rearranged my schedule. I got this. I'm ready to take the next step, Marshall. What do I do? And he, again, you know, when you look at the schedule, there were things that I still can move around. There were things we ended up freeing up like six hours of my, of my week. So here again, I get to the point, I'm like, yes, now it's making sense. It goes back into that, like that aha moment. It's clicking. 
once you make it make sense, get the structure down, get it on your schedule, stick to your schedule, make sure that your calendar has the things that are what you need to be doing. I had things on my schedule that I didn't realize that's not money-making activities. Take that off my schedule or I need to get, you know, work around that. I need to figure out what I'm doing every day. Those are productive. What I'm doing, I may have a lot of things on my schedule, but if they're not productive, that's what's throwing me off balance. I am ready to take that next step, but I was nervous. I'm nervous to take the next step because I know what that's going to be, right? I've done it so many times now. I get a little wobbly. I just want to make sure that everything is, is where it should be. So I know the first thing I have to do is get organized, stay organized, get my structure, get control of my time, my calendar, and it all falls into place. And then you get to where you own it. You own your time. You own your calendar. You own your life. John, I, uh, it's so cool to see kind of that transformation of like having this overload that really wasn't like an actual overload of things. It was just maybe that, that, that mental thing of like, I just wasn't putting things in the right perspective and wasn't prioritizing. And so, you know, I, I think it, it kind of goes along with the theme of like, Hey, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet on, on a scheduling basis, but now you're, you're getting there. Right. And now you're learning as I level up in this business and there's different things that I need to shuffle around and new responsibilities. I'm able to, to really figure out how to reallocate, um, you know, the, the schedule to accommodate those things. So, Thank you so much for, for pouring into all of us today. And, and, and I know you found such a cool balance and it's crazy what you can do once, once you kind of get that, that calendar, right? So thank you so much for sharing. Um, yes. And, um, and I, I mean, I wish we had so much more time for, for everyone here, but, uh, but moving right along into to this next guest that needs no introduction. It's kind of like, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the new talk show host that, uh, that they're doing, uh, David Letterman has a, has a new talk show. This is my next guest needs no introduction, but, uh, but Nick and Patty Compatory agency owners, Nick and Patty Compatory have been such incredible friends to me for, for the last three years or so. Um, you know, they're, they're no strangers to, to the top of the leaderboards. They, they are kind of the, the King Kong of production last year, being the number one producers in all of symmetry over 700,000 of business, you know, their best month personally is 88,000 on their own pen. Their agency has done over a hundred thousand in, in team volume in a month. And they have just been this, this really cool yin and yang in the business, you know, Nick Britt bringing a little bit more of that pioneer Patty, bringing that, that more nurturer and just creating this, this power couple for, for their team and, and been really, really good force for good for, for everyone here. And so uh, guys, I, I wanted to bring you on and, and Patty, I wanted to start with you because uh, in your business, you guys have gone through lots of change. Um, and, and in order to grow, we have to go through some change. And so I want to, well, you know, now that you guys have kind of conquered that beach of the production, talk about the changes that you've had to make in other aspects of your business to really get everything that, that there is to offer here. Thank you, Grant. You know, we're direct to the awesome Grant Lieber and the Hershey, Hershey, Miller, Miller, Whalen hierarchy. And I'm so proud to be part of this. But, you know, we, when we first started, like everybody, there was a struggle. Nick and I couldn't find our stride because we went in the home together. And so we had to be in sync and we had to do it as one person, although there were two, so that we made the client comfortable and that we knew what we were doing. And we finally hit our stride. And like Brandon said, your ego is there because you're so proud of what you're doing. And we're sitting there going, yeah, the impact on the families. This is what it's all about. And then all of a sudden we had to make a change. We had to go from there to building. And it was really tough for me because I was so used to those darn leaderboards that it was something that I looked forward to seeing because yeah, we did it again. And, but then when I went to building, I had to transfer all of that back into building. I had to learn how to ignore that, do what we had to do to produce so that we could bring the ability to other people to have the same lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle that we have. You know, when I bring somebody on and I'm talking to them, I say, you know what, this is what we did. Now you can do this. And how would that impact your life? So as I'm building I'm, I'm just looking for the people that want to have the impact we've had and that want to change their life, that don't want to work the nine to five, that want to get out of that E quadrant 
and start going into the S quadrant, into the B quadrant. And I'm just, it's knowing that we can help other people reach a goal that they have that I think makes this company so amazing that we can offer it to other people. And I just don't know of any other place you can go and have trips, the ability to touch lives, to make a difference in people that you've never met before. I just find that one of the greatest gifts God could give anybody and that's Brandon, Casey and Brian and you. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, Patty, you're too kind. And like, so so talking about the changes that you've had to make in your business to, to really put on that building hat, I know you mentioned to me the concept of leaderboards have been a, a tough one to maybe personally overcome. Like, tell me about your feelings about, about that change. I think it was harder for me than for Nick because not seeing my name up there, I kept feeling like I was a failure because I hadn't made it in building yet. I still haven't. I'm just learning a new craft. And so I'm at the bottom again. And that's a hard place to start from when you've been where you're successful and you know, when you walk into a home, you've got two people that are in sync and we can just hit it like that. And we're proud of the, what we learned to do, but now I've got to put that into building. And I wanted so much to bring as many people as I can in. And so with Marshall and Grant and Carl and everybody else, pouring into us how to be a, a, a good leader because now I have to take the production hat off even though I still produce I still have to put that hat on to lead other people in production but also to bring them in as a recruit to build their business so I'm learning all over again it's tough to guide somebody because I'm new at where I'm going but all I know is if I keep reaching out and I keep reading and focusing on all the things that is needed to build this business. We'll get there. We'll be on the top of the leaderboards again. We're going to be up number one with you, Grant, up there. But I'm going to bring a bunch <laughs> of people with me. I'm not going by myself. And Nick and I decided we're just going to have the largest agency they've ever had. So that's my goal for me. I just want to bring as many people on this journey as I can before I go to the ground and meet Jesus. I do. <laughs> and, and like you know you, you touched on like maybe having to go back to the well a little bit because you know when you guys learned like how to be a producer like you guys didn't just be an eighty thousand dollar producer overnight right like there was lots of conversations there was lots of training there was lots of practice there was the calls before during after all of your appointments where we had to work on that and when it came to the other side of the business you know we, we maybe didn't have as much of that right and I know it's so tough when you go from like being the, the number one producer in the whole company to, to now trying to figure out how to kind of like learn to walk at, on another side. It's, it's a little bit of an awkward transition. And so I look at where your business is, you know, just in the last couple of months with everyone you're bringing to this altitude conference with the amount of people you have on your team, the way the people on your team are talking about you. Like I can tell you guys are, are turning that leaf. You know, we're asking more questions. We're growing in that way. So so thank you, Patty. And, and like for Nick, what, what's your kind of view on the change that your business has, has had to go through recently? Well, you know, um, you, not there yet, right, Grant? Um, once you get there, you're not there. It's always that striving to grow and to get better. So Brandon said it on the call, right? Ch lean into. We, we, when we came into the business, we wanted to do it together. Um, but everything we did, we leaned into um, to get better at it. So when we when we came in, we leaned, we leaned into the phone. We leaned in going into homes. When Zoom, when we were, got on Zoom, we leaned into Zoom. Everything about leaning in brings growth. So I would say, just to say this, probably in this last few months or so, we've probably grown more than we have in the last few years because when we got into doing the production, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And we got, it's a funny thing about momentum. When you feel momentum, it's very powerful. And we felt that momentum. And when we got, we hit agency owner at the end of last year, we sort of came into 2021. It's like, we stopped and we looked at everything. And it's like, we love producing. We love helping families, but man, the building aspect of this business is just incredible. 
as Patty said, to be able to bring other people out of a nine to five job or out of a, a false security, to bring them into a place where you can come in and, and grow as an individual and help other people and impact other people's lives, man. That's what it's about. So now, what are we doing? We're becoming students of building. Patty and I, when we did everything in production, like she said, she has a part, I have a part. We manage that. Now, we have to work separately, honestly, as far as building. Every aspect and process of what we do in building the system and everything is we have to learn each part separately so that we can do both. Yeah. Um, and that's something we had to look at. And when we looked at that, we had to look at weakness and strength. And I'm going to tell you, man, the thing about problems, I don't even like that word problem, or, uh, but I'm going to use it, um, is in every problem, there's an opportunity. And when you take a hard look at stuff, and you don't procrastinate, it gives you the choice to either change it or continue doing it. And we've had talks, right? Like that hamster wheel. Yeah. No, we, we want to move forward. So um, we're very psyched. Um, we're very excited about the conference coming up and the one next year. We want to get as many people there because those conferences have impacted us. I can't even tell you how they've impacted us. Um, and being able to get like Patty said, be experts at bringing people in and building our business. Um, so as far as production, it's less, a lot less, but it's better because we're better at it. And it's about putting our time into building. Um, does that make sense? It does, man. I mean, and it's, it's really just about efficiency. It, it, it's about going from maybe being motivated by being at the top of the leaderboard to, to being motivated by running an efficient business. And, and part of that is facing some harsh, you know, the harsh, harsh <laughs> truths in the business. And like, you know, we all have blind spots and, you know, part of the blind spot problem is you don't know it's there. And, you know, one of the blind spots has been maybe a little bit of, of having to go through more of that learning curve and building. And so the, the way that you're going through that learning curve now goes to show Patty that you absolutely can't have, you know, the largest agency in, in, in this organization. Right. Um, and so I'm just really glad that, that we're finally kind of, kind of turning the page there, you know, because you guys have, have been where you're at, you know, and, and been such an incredible producer for so long and we're ready to grow. You guys have everything it takes to grow, to get to the top contract level. You know, you guys have, are, are obviously pushing me up every day and encouraging me to be better. And I love our eight to 10 phone calls a day. And one thing I have to admit as, as a, as, you know, mentor coach, you know, maybe to other people is like, when you're working with really high quality people, like you want to make sure that you're having lots of talks about celebration. Like I love celebrating the wins of you guys writing policies. I love celebrating the new people on the team, but we got to make sure that we also have enough intentional conversations. And I think one thing that we've had in the last two months that we maybe haven't had for a couple of years is very, very intentional conversations about like what we're doing to really help you grow and, and what we're doing to, to work on this particular skill set. And even if it's uncomfortable as saying, Hey, how do I post this ad or how do I do this or how to do that? Where you feel like, maybe I should know it like that's part of the learning curve and I know you guys don't don't have any uh any problem with reaching out and asking for help and you guys have been incredible students of the business so thank you guys so much for sharing thank you Grant absolutely and uh and and our anchor of the day is is someone who is kind of the embodiment of of all of these principles together um you know Shauna talked about balance Nick and Patty talked about you know change that them and their business have had to make and, uh, and, and this gentleman, agency owner, Alec Myers, um, he's, he's someone who, who has really worked on a high degree of persistency. Um, you know, persistency is a metric that the carriers use to, to determine like, are you writing good business? Persistency is something that we all think about to, to see like, how far are you gonna go and how long can you stay on it? And, you know, Alec, being someone who's personally done 47,000 in a month, you know, you know what it's like to be persistent in the field, having a team that's done 87,000 in a month, you know what it's like to lead a team and, and create persistent activity there. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm so lucky also to be in business with you, have you as, as, as a friend and, you know, a different voice order that, that gives me the opportunity to, to grow as we work together. Um, so talk to me, man, about like what persistency has meant to you and your business. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, Alec Myers, I am direct to 
my business partner, my mentor, my very good friend, Mr. Grant Lieber, and super honored to, to, to really kind of to, to bring all this together for you guys. You know, persistency for me is, is really just what you do after you have the balance and the change, right? It's how long can you continue to, to, to go back and forth between balance and change? Uh, with the trajectory that this company is on right now, uh, there's a lot of change. Brandon and Casey talked about that earlier. We're going to talk about that uh, in here in just a minute. Um, but, but the persistency side of it, it you fir first you have to understand what persistency is. It's uh, the quality of persisting, right? Uh, I'm kidding. It, it's tenacity. It's, it's continuing to try. Um, persistency is the effect that continues even after the cause has been removed. To put it frankly, it's never giving up. Now, it isn't not giving up. It's never giving up. That's what persistency is. <clears throat> you know, persistency is often uh, mistaken for endurance, <clears throat> right? We've got, um, you know, we're kind of tailing the end of of the Olympics right now, whether you watch the Olympics, whether you watch NFL, it doesn't matter. There is something to be said about people that are at the height of their game and the amount of endurance it takes to get to that level. Endurance is to remain in existence. It's not the same thing as persistency. Oftentimes you'll find endurance within persistency. There, there's, there's a rotation, there's a relationship between persistency and endurance that goes back and forth. Persistency is the outcome of enduring. It's never giving up. Endurance is to suffer patiently, to last. How, how many of you guys, how many people in your business right now, how many do you, how many of you feel like you're just lasting right now? How many of you feel like you get on the phone to dial and you're suffering patiently? <clears throat> guys, persistence is right around the corner. Balancing your schedule for dials, changing the way you do things, unlearning things that have served you in the past, taking two steps back to go 100 steps forward. Persistency is on the other side of that, right? I, I, want, I, want, to share, <clears throat> I want to share a small story here, and then, then I'll kind of make my point. So there's a parable out there about uh, a man and an eagle's egg. And uh, a man, you know, farmer found an eagle's egg and he put it in the nest of, you know, the, the barnyard hens. And eventually the eaglet hatched with the brood of chickens and it grew up with them. All, you know, all the eagle's life did what the barnyard chicks did, thinking he was a barnyard chicken. You know, he would scratch the earth for worms, insects, he clucked, he clacked, you know, he would thrash his wings and fly just a few feet in the air. Um, and then years passed and the eagle grew very old. And one day, you know, he was sitting there scratching the floor. Um, and there was a shadow that had flown over the top of him. And he looked up and gliding in its graceful majesty was, was the golden eagle. And oh, the eagle looked oh, I up. I don't know if we lost you, buddy. Oh, can you hear me? We can hear you, Alec. Grant Got me? Up. Yeah, I think, I think we lost Grant. <laughs> um, so the, the eagle looked up and he said, what, what is that? And, you know, his neighbor replied, he belongs to the sky. That's the eagle. That's the king of birds. And we belong to the earth because we're chickens. So the eagle lived and died a chicken because <laughs> that's what he thought he was. Now, <clears throat> with symmetry, with Quility, with Ashura, we have a system that lets chickens act like eagles. We get to surround ourselves with eagles and emulate their behaviors. How many people, you know, how many of you guys, when you come into this business, you're scared, you're chicken, you're nervous, right? You, you got a lot of uncertainty, a lot of doubt. Um, that was me, right? And the system that we have here at Symmetry allows you to plug into people 
that, that have paved the way for our success. If and here's what I'll tell you, if, if you're not talking to someone within symmetry on a daily basis, you're extending your learning curve. You're adding to the time that it takes to get better at this business. You're adding to the time that it takes you to learn the balance that to learn how to manage change and overcome challenges. And you're prolonging the time of persisting through those breakthroughs. So um, in, in terms of persistency, Grant, you know, I look at my persistency and my strength as being a byproduct of leaning on you, leaning on Josh and Daniel Hershey, Carl Ryan Miller, you know, all the leaders within symmetry. So that, that's, that's what I would have to say about what persistency means to me. <laughs> that's awesome, man. And like, uh, I, I wanted to ask you just, just kind of this, this last question about, um, about motivation, about fuel. I know you talk about people in this business and inspire you. I know, I know you talk about like, you know, what your journey has looked like and, and, and the growth that you've had to go through, but like, what's kind of been the, the fuel for the fire? What's been the motivating factor? What's the thing that carries you through when, when maybe you do have the rough dial week, maybe you do have the, the tough week, maybe there is a, a little bit of an emotionally draining call, like what carries you through that? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I really had to ask myself, you know, when, when, when times get bad, because they, they happen, right? When times get bad, my, the, the question just, just burns in my brain. What happens if I slow down? What happens if I speed up? You know, my, my wife, Renee, smoking hot wife, she's into the Olympics. I love her for it. Um, you know, her, she swam in, in high school, played volleyball in college. You know, so we, you know, we're, everyone always likes watching swimming. Michael Phelps is probably regarded as one of the, I mean, he's, he's the most prestigious athlete with 28 medals on, on this planet, right? Like it's, it's people talk about him as being the most prestigious athlete. And last week, Caleb Dressel broke his world, broke his record in the hundred meter butterfly by, I can't read like five hundredths of a second or, or something like that. something crazy broke his record. Right. Do you think Dressel planned for that? Maybe, P probably not, right? But he never would have had the chance if he didn't show up. And so I, I look at, you know, what motivates me. And here, here's, here's what I know. I know that exercising is hard, right? But never moving makes life harder. Um, uncomfortable conversations are hard, but avoiding conflict is even harder. Dials are hard, but being broke is a lot harder than making dials. And what it comes down to for me is easy has a cost, guys. It does. There's agent, there, there's key leaders doing agency director numbers. There's, you know, when I first came into the business back when we had to walk up hill both ways, you know, in the snow, um, man, if, if you were on, you were at, one, two, and three, if you were writing $10,000 a week in production. It's sometimes hard to be in the top 10 if you're not over that $10,000 a week mark. And that goes back to what Casey and Brandy, Brandon were talking about on the change side. People have adapted. People have changed. And if easy has a cost and the cost of doing something uncomfortable is going to lead to that breakthrough, it's going to lead to that persistency, it's going to teach you and coach you how to overcome endurance when you feel like, man, you've made a thousand interviews and you're just trying and you're, you know, you're just trying to keep going. You know, it's that that's, I would gladly pay that price. I'm okay with paying the price of hard if I know what the reward is. And when I look at my motivation, coming back from Marshall's house for the third time, knowing you went there, seeing Josh go there, seeing Shauna go there, seeing you hit 110, seeing Josh hit 115, making his, his stretch to 120, that's, that's my future. That's my reward. If I keep doing what you guys are doing, if I keep following what you guys are, are, are telling me to do, that, that's what I'm going to get, right? Um, Andrew Jimenez <clears throat> did a call yesterday on the Wayland uh, the Whalen hierarchy call about a donkey in the well parable. And if you haven't read it or heard about it, it applies to symmetry 
so so well. Um, and basically the point is you shake it off and take a step. You shake it off, you take a step, you shake it off, you take a step. The same rule applies to how you eat an elephant, one, one bite at a time. Um, I'll share one more thing and then I'm gonna drive this point home. I've got a friend in the business, his name's J.R. Smith. He's in his fifties, the guy mountain bikes, plays hockey, Usually I'm in the gym when I call him, you know, I'm pretty sure he's the only one in the world that can whoop up on Mark Wahlberg. Um, but we were talking about endurance and how it applies to athleticism. And he's a big mountain bike guy. And, you know, he, he kind of told me, he was like, man, symmetry is like the mountain. And any of us that have read the 100X Leader, you know, know knows that correlation as well. Sometimes you can't look at the mountain. Sometimes you just got to stare at your tire and pedal. And you've got to rely on the system. You've got to rely on the leaders. You've got to rely on the Grant Liebers, the Nick and Patties, the, the Marshall Whalens, the Carl Millers. You got to rely on those people to keep you on the mountain. And sometimes you just have to stare at the tire and pedal. Sometimes you got to go down to that first gear, the lowest gear possible and stay in that endurance phase. It's important, it's really important to know where you're going, but sometimes your focus just has to be one more dial, one more interview, one more dial block, one more day that I'm going to commit myself to my business and, and you gotta pedal. And, and if, if you're asking yourself, you know, how, what, what what's the application? It, it's really simple. You got to master the art of showing up. Um, you know, when, when it comes to choosing new habits, many people ask themselves, you know, what can I do on my best days? The trick is to ask, what can I stick to on my worst days? Not what can I do on my best days? What can I stick to on my worst days? Start small master the art of showing up, scale up when you have the time, energy, and interest. Um, how this all relates to endurance, persistency, balance, and change. <clears throat> you know, I've already mentioned, we talk about Mount Symmetry and the egos that surround it. We need to lean on our mentors. We need to trust the change that, that Brandon and Casey have, have given us with this system, with Quility HQ, with, you know, in the past, in the past, my dial days are Friday, Saturday. I'm running appointments on Fridays now. Why? Because I got my leads on Tuesday. <laughs> it's different. Growth, guys, if you want growth, sometimes you've got to unlearn things that have served you in the past. There is no, there's no such thing as a bad dial day. There is never a wrong time to put in activity because effort takes zero skill, takes zero skill to put in maximum effort, okay? And, and when we get lost, our mentors are, are right there to put us right back on the mountain. And, and, and what do we do, Andrew? We shake it off and take a step because unfinished projects can't compound. And it's gonna cost you a lot more if you don't move forward and take a step than if we don't. Because exercising might be hard, but not moving makes life harder. Man. Uh, I, there's not a whole lot to add there, man. I mean, you, 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 you crush that. And I guess the main point is if you guys are feeling tired, if you're feeling like there's one more dial I don't want to make, go ahead and take the break, but take the break tomorrow. Because just like you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to start tomorrow why don't you instead think about it as I'm going to quit tomorrow and I'll start today because just like tomorrow never comes. If you're trying to get started tomorrow also won't come if you're trying to quit. So if you put in the work today, make tomorrow the day you take the break because when tomorrow comes, you'll probably realize you don't need it. But if you do just say, Hey, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take the break the next day. So just like the way that people might procrastinate getting things done, procrastinate, not getting things done. The only bad dial day, Alec, is the day you don't dial. <laughs> so with that, guys, I want to thank you so much for jumping on. We all know that we're not there yet. We're hoping that you guys can all take this message and, and, and maybe just stay on it a little bit longer. 
just one more day, just one more dial, just one more appointment. And make sure that you do reach out and, and lean on so many of the people in this business that have paved the way. There's no need to reinvent the wheel when we already have a system down. So, uh, so Shauna, Nick and Patty, Alec Myers, I'm so fortunate to be in business with you. For everybody out here, thank you so much for the opportunity to share. We hope we really added some value to you today. Have an awesome rest of your Wednesday and awesome week, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.